Hey there, my brony friends! Today I will be continuing my headcanon story regarding the history of the Crystal Empire. Now before we get started, I'd like to say that if you have not seen my other headcanon videos, you should do so right now, as you will not understand a lot of this video unless you have seen my three previous videos. The link to them is in the description. Also, don't watch this unless you're willing to listen to new headcanon ideas, or just want to listen to a good story. Now let's begin. Three, two, one. Sombra smiled, reaching a hoof up to touch his new unicorn horn. It was beyond amazing for him to have been able to change his own species. Even the great star swirl the bearded could not have done such a thing. Dark magic was truly better than the magic of old, thought Sombra. Taking one last look in the mirror at his new magical adornment, Sombra felt that for once he had a chance to become something more. He had to show Luna, but as soon as he had thought of the idea, he rejected it. He had gotten the horn by going into the Forbidden Archives. Sombra shuddered to think what Luna would do if she found out he had been there. But then a plan formed in his mind. He could just as easily say that he had made the transformation spell himself, or that he had found it in the Canterlot Library. That way he could share his joy with Luna without her knowing that he had been in the Forbidden Archives. Looking through the book one more time, Sombra found an invisibility spell. He performed it on the book, pleasantly surprised at how easy it was to perform the spell with a horn to channel the dark energy with. He set the invisible book atop his back, strapped it on with two invisibly enchanted pieces of cloth he had found on the ground, and rushed out of the room. Through his excitement, Sombra had almost forgotten about how a Draconicus had been attacking Canterlot, but now everything looked to be back to normal, and the Draconicus had been turned to stone. In the corner of his eye, Sombra spotted the princesses near the stone Draconicus, with their wings and horns restored. He galloped over to them, yelling at the top of his lungs in a joyful tone. Luna, he cried. Canterlot is saved! Thank goodness! But I have even more exciting news. Look what I- Sombra froze as the princesses turned to face him. Tears were flowing down their cheeks, and Celestia was putting a hoof tenderly onto the stone Draconicus's head. Luna's sadness suddenly turned to surprise. Sombra? She said. Why is your coat no longer crystal? She gasped, her eyes boring into the horn on the top of Sombra's head. Celestia did also. No, Luna said softly. Then Sombra stood frozen in terror as Luna's face contorted into a look of pure ferociousness. She screamed at him. What have you done? Sombra gulped and said, I found a spell to change me into a unicorn, like we've always dreamed. You used dark magic, Luna screamed, her telekinetic magic closing in around Sombra's throat. Luna, Celestia cried, putting a hoof on her sister's shoulder. You're hurting him. Stop. Luna released Sombra from her magical chokehold and began bursting into a fresh spout of tears. I trusted you, just like I trusted Discord. Now you've both betrayed me. Celestia held her sister close, crying as she gazed at the stone Draconicus once more. Sombra coughed, his throat still feeling like it was under pressure. He stared at the weeping alicorns. How had she known he had used dark magic? And why? Why were they so sad about the Draconicus being defeated? More importantly, why was she so angry at him? Celestia looked up at Sombra harshly, her eyes like burning embers. Where did you find dark magic spells? She questioned him. I, I didn't use dark magic. I, I used regular magic. I don't even know what dark magic is, Sombra lied. Celestia's eyes narrowed. Your horn is the same as the Horn of Umbra, the ancient who started the Great War of the Chaos Bringers long ago. He was the first to harness and wield dark magic. Dark magic corrupts and destroys those who use it, and the ponies it is used upon. Do you think my sister and I are stupid? Luna raised her head, her eyes like slits. The use of dark magic by normal ponies is banned in this nation. What you have done is evil, Sombra. You must be punished, Luna spat. The two princesses stood, their horns lighting up with magical aura. Sombra ran. He was absolutely terrified, as well as extremely regretful for what evil he had done to himself and the emotional hurt he had caused Luna. But then, 
When Celestia and Luna used their magic to trap him in magical binds, his fear gave way to a torrent of anger. He lashed out at the princesses, using dark magic, the corrupting force fueling his anger even more. The unprepared and already tired princesses cried out as beams of dark magic hit them, sending them crashing onto the ground. The overwhelming burst of dark magic paralyzed them, pinning them to the floor. Sombra broke free of the magical bondages, running out of Canterlot at top speed. He stumbled a few times, the outburst of dark magic having drained his system, as well as the heavy invisible spellbook still strapped to his back. But something else was happening to the unicorn. His using of multiple complicated dark magic spells had ruptured a hole in his subconscious. The corrupting forces of the dark magic were seeping into it, slowly tearing away the old personality and morals of Sombra, and bringing in new, evil traits. As Sombra ran farther and farther away from Canterlot, he grew angrier and angrier at his former Alicorn friend. He had not betrayed her, she had betrayed him! He had finally fulfilled his dream of becoming more powerful, and she had not been happy for him. In fact, she had attempted to hurt him. What kind of a friend did that? Sombra traveled many days, using hundreds of dark magic spells during the period to disguise himself, as well as provide for himself as he traveled. The dark magic had truly begun to change him now. He would incoherently mumble to himself all of the time, twitch his head to the side constantly, randomly burst into menacing laughter, and overall was beginning to go insane, if he wasn't already. Once, as he was madly flipping through the pages of the Book of the Dark Magic, he came upon the errant growing spell again. Smiling in a crazed fashion, Sombra laughed, thinking about how his crystal pony parents had not wanted him and left him at an orphanage. His dark, magic-fueled anger began to rise dangerously, and the voices in his head began to whisper ideas to him. Crystal ponies were bad. The crystal ponies needed to be taught a lesson. In a rabid rage, Sombra headed for the Crystal Empire, intent on getting his revenge for a blown out of proportion crime. When he arrived at the kingdom, he attacked everything in sight in full force with his great dark powers. Surprised by the dark magic-wielding pony, the army of the Crystal Empire hurriedly tried to fight back, but to no avail. Sombra's dark powers encasing them in errant crystals. Already knowing of the Crystal Heart and its powers, Sombra went for the heart, flinging aside any pony who tried to get to it first. Reaching it, Sombra triumphantly used his magic to encase the heart in errant crystal. The Queen of the Empire, Emerald Beam, rushed outside of her castle to find her kingdom in peril. She furiously turned on Sombra, using her crystal powers to try to stab Sombra with the crystals she quickly grew out of the ground. But her crystals shattered as they touched Sombra's coat, and with that, Sombra quickly disposed of the queen. Sombra declared himself the new ruler of the Empire, using his dark powers to enslave the crystal ponies who lived within it. He placed the crystal heart on top of the crystal castle, a cruel joke to play on the crystal slaves, who could not fly like Pegasi. The new king also donned the armor and the capes of the previous ancient kings of the Empire, and laid dark traps and secrets throughout his castle. The kingdom went to ruin, the crystal ponies miserable under the leadership of their master, who made them grow and mine crystals day after day without rest. The ponies begged for mercy, but the corrupted king was deaf to their cries. He became obsessed with crystals, the only things he cared about were his crystalline companions. They told him things, said to him how marvelous he was, how powerful he was. His favorite crystal, though, was the large one kept deep in the crystal castle, which contained a purple pegasus holding her small pink child. Sombra loved this one, talking to it constantly. It was not long before the princesses of Equestria caught wind of the trouble brewing in the Crystal Empire. Shocked at the news, they immediately donned the elements of harmony and led hundreds of their best soldiers out onto the snowy north on a beeline towards the Crystal Empire. Once they arrived, a fierce battle broke out between the Equestrian Royal Guard and Sombra's mind-controlled Crystal Pony soldiers. Celestia and Luna flew to the Crystal Castle, ready to use the elements against whatever danger that had been plaguing the Empire. They entered the throne room, shocked to see Sombra sitting in the crystal throne. Sombra, said Luna, narrowing her eyes. 
I knew you had fallen to the lure of the dark magic, but I never would have guessed what pain and misery you would wreck on your kind. Sombra let out a growl as he shot Luna a crazed smile. You have always underestimated me, fair princess, and that will cost you. Sombra leapt from his throne, striking out at the princesses with thick tendrils of dark magic. They automatically stepped back, only to feel the floor fall out from underneath them. They tumbled down into a dark hole in the ground, crashing onto the ground at the bottom. The floor above them resealed, leaving the girls trapped in the dark hole. As they used their magic to shine light around the area, they saw a spiral staircase that was wrapped around the sides of the hole. They led back up to the area from which the girls had fallen. Celestia explored the upper portion of the cave, while Luna explored the bottom portion, both of them looking for a way to escape. Luna soon spotted a door at the very bottom of the hole, and proceeded to open it, her eyes widening in horror. But what she saw is another story. Eventually, the girls escaped the trap, and confronted Sombra once more. Their battle raged, Sombra blasting the princesses with attacks made of pure hate and insanity. Celestia and Luna fought back with the elements of harmony, weakening the Dark King with every magical blast. Eventually, the battered unicorn lay beaten on the cold stone floor of the Crystal Castle's balcony, growling harshly. As the princesses prepared to unleash the full power of the elements on Sombra, the king gave one last smile at Luna, staring straight into her blue eyes. I will see you again, my dear, he said, giving a haggard cough a shiver rippling through his body. For there is one thing the elements cannot do, and that is keep some pony away forever. <laughs> I'm sure you'll realize that soon enough, my dear Luna. The elements of harmony released their full power on the Dark King, his screams echoing around the kingdom as his body ripped apart, disintegrating into shadowy smoke. The smoke hurtled toward the ground, the ice opening up and swallowing what was left of the Dark King. The kingdom cheered, their magically infused bonds breaking, and the soldiers' minds clearing of the king's influence. But as suddenly as the ponies' cheers started, they began to turn into screams of fear. For the kingdom, and its inhabitants, was beginning to fade, becoming transparent. Celestia, Luna, and the royal guard watched in horror as the city and the ponies around them faded away. Soon nothing was left of the kingdom, the icy snow of the north beating down on freshly cleared ground. Sombra had performed a spell before the elements had hit him, making the empire fade into shadow just as he had. Their hearts heavy and eyes full of tears, the princesses and their army trudged back to Canterlot. They had come to protect the empire, but instead they had caused its destruction. Queen Amethyst's shine and her baby Cadence, still frozen in time in the crystal grown by King Rubinus, were the only ponies in the Crystal Empire that did not disappear when Sombra used his spell. The magical crystal encasing the two ponies protected them from his dark enchantment, but the crystal was weakened from this, and over the course of almost a thousand years, Amethyst's shine subconsciously put bits and pieces of her life force into the crystal protecting her and her child, ensuring that the crystal would keep on protecting them until the time was right to break free. Eventually, that time did come, and on a day twenty-five or so years before the return of Nightmare Moon, the crystal finally broke. Amethyst and Baby Cadence fell into the snow as the crystal around them shattered. The snow was freezing, and Amethyst's child cried as her weakened mother carried her through the blizzard. She knew she had to bring the child to safety, and in, in her weakened state, she had to find someone fast. As the tiring mother and child traveled, the weather died down, and soon they came upon a forest. Beyond the forest was a small village. Amethyst felt very weak at this point. She had given up a great deal of her life force in order to keep her precious one safe and sound. With great remorse, she realized that she no longer had the strength to care for her little princess. Seeing a young earth pony couple wandering through the forest, Amethyst slowly headed towards them, but suddenly felt her legs collapse under her in exhaustion. She could hardly move, but Amethyst managed to gently lay baby Cadence down on the path the couple was taking, and then she dragged herself into a nearby bush, not wanting the couple to see her. Tears in her eyes, 
Amethyst smiled as her heart came to a slow stop. The last thing she heard being the happy coo of her baby as the stallion and mare found her. Cadence grew up to be a lovely Pegasus mare, the most loved in a small village she lived in with her adoptive parents. Though no one knew of her being part alicorn, her natural aura of magic around her from her father caused her to be able to get along with and start friendships with other ponies like no others she knew could. She would sometimes play matchmaker for her friends, using her natural gifts to help mares fall in love with their stallions, and vice versa. Sometimes she would help broken relationships get repaired, or even fixed completely. There was no doubt that the love her true parents had shared had been passed on to their daughter. But there was one pony in the village who did not like Cadence. In fact, she hated Cadence. Her name was Prismia. She was an evil enchantress who lived alone on the outskirts of the village, and brought misfortune and hate to the town's inhabitants. She wore a special crystal necklace her ancestors had passed down to her from the days when Equestria and the Crystal Empire had traded goods frequently. It was very rare, grown by Rubinus himself. It was the same kind of gem as the Crystal Heart, only much smaller. It amplified any emotions the wearer had and then generated them, making the wearer on a cycle of that emotion. Unfortunately for Prismia, who had not known of the gem's great powers, had worn the gem frequently, even on days of great pain, anger, and sorrow for her. These negative emotions were amplified and then constantly generated by the gem, twisting Prismia into the evil enchantress she soon became. Prismia eventually snapped. She constantly felt so sad, so mad. She was ferociously jealous of the other ponies in the village, who seemed to have all the love and happiness in the world. Using the gem's power, Prismia stole the emotions of love and happiness from the ponies around her, wanting it all for herself. The villagers became depressed, feeling empty and devoid of all good feelings they had towards each other. But Cadence knew what was going on. She confronted Prismia and explained to her the true meaning of loving your fellow pony. Then something incredible happened. The gem amplified Cadence's sisterly love and compassion for Prismia and the ponies of the village and it sent it cascading throughout the town. Prismia's feelings of anger and sadness washed away, being replaced with the love and joy Cadence felt. The crystal necklace had been cleansed of its bad feelings, and Prismia was back to her old self, before she had donned the necklace. Grateful, Prismia gave Cadence the necklace. Cadence put it on, only for it to begin to glow brightly. In an instant, Cadence found herself transported to a strange place. It was as if she was in space, with glowing stars everywhere and empty space spread out before her. It was then that Princess Celestia appeared, and found the young mare. She was surprised, as only she knew about this place. Then a bright glowing light appeared atop Cadence's head. She began to float, the light growing even brighter. After a flash, Cadence descended, a unicorn horn gracing her once bare forehead. Cadence? and her dealings with Prismia had discovered the true meaning of love, activating her alicorn roots and transforming her into an alicorn. Greatly surprised at the sight before her, Celestia gasped as long-forgotten memories floated to the surface. As a young girl, she had been to the Crystal Empire during the celebration of Cadence's birth. She remembered Cadence and recognized her now as she stood in front of her. Celestia took Cadence to Canterlot, where a huge celebration commenced celebrating the return of the lost princess of the Crystal Empire. And so Cadence lived in Canterlot with Princess Celestia as her aunt, which was really more of a term of endearment, though the ponies were distantly related. Cadence refined and practiced her method of bringing love to others, learning to use it in a spell form with her horn. Also, in order to mingle with the subjects of Canterlot more easily, Cadence took small jobs around the city to help out every pony, one of her favorite jobs, though, was to babysit a special little filly named Twilight Sparkle, a filly with a great, spectacular destiny of her own. But that, my friends, is another story. Thank you all so much for watching and supporting my History of Equestria series. 
With this video, the series comes to a close, though I may do the changelings at some point. Now, it's time for the stories of the parents of the main six, starting with the parents of our favorite apple bucker, Applejack. Princess Cadence needs our help. Her magic will not last forever. I think we can do it, but we need to work together. Oh, we have to get this right. Yes, we have to make them see. We can save the crystal ponies with their history. It says that they like jousting. They flew a flag of many hues. Might sweets of crystal berries. They had a petting zoo with tiny ewes. Oh, we have to get this right. Yes, so we have to make them see. We can save the crystal ponies with their history. There was a crystal flugel horn that every pony liked to play. And a crystal kingdom anthem. Can you learn it in a day? Oh, we have to get this right. Yes, we have to make them see. We can save the crystal ponies with their history.